In this video, we will practice making a decision using a decision tree. This example includes the option to gather information before making a decision. Here's a problem statement. Please take a moment to look over it. Smith Industries must decide whether to manufacture a new component at its factory or purchase the component from a supplier. Here's a payoff table with the profits in thousands of dollars. We can see there are two decision alternatives, manufacture and purchase, and three states of nature or chance events, high demand, medium demand, and low demand. If there is a high demand, it's worthwhile to manufacture the component because there will be some initial cost to set up the manufacturing process, but the variable cost per unit should be lower. We could see here the payoff of manufacturing is higher than that for the purchase decision. But if the demand is low, then we could see it's better to purchase the component, since with lower volume, it's not worthwhile to set up the manufacturing process. Unfortunately, we don't know the demand level before we make the decision of uh, make or buy, but the probabilities of the different demand levels are estimated and given here. If a market research is done before making the decision, it will predict either a favorable market or an unfavorable market. Here, we have the conditional probabilities of different chance events given favorable prediction. For instance, uh, here it says if the prediction is favorable, then the probability of high demand is 0.45. So the favorable prediction raises the probability of high demand from 0.3 to 0.45. Given unfavorable prediction, the probabilities of different demand levels are given here. Notice the unfavorable prediction raises the probability of low demand from 0.3 to 0.4. We are also given the probabilities of different predictions here, favorable or unfavorable. Probably a favorable prediction is 0.4 and a probably a unfavorable prediction is 0.6. Suppose the market research is expected to cost $10,000. Is it worth spending the money? So it will predict either a favorable or unfavorable market condition. So depending on the prediction, what would you do? What kind of decision would you make? So we want to determine the best decision strategy, including whether the market research should be conducted and, of course, what to do after that. This situation involves more than one decision, so it's best to use a decision tree. Remember the steps in a decision tree analysis can be listed as follows. You draw the tree from left to right. Remember it has two kinds of nodes. The square nodes, which represent decision points, and the round nodes, which represent chance event nodes. After we draw the tree, we assign probabilities to chance events, that is the branches that come from the, the round chance nodes, and then also the payoffs we want to assign to the ends of the tree limbs, that is, to the very right of the branches. A third, we compute the value at each node, that is, we solve the tree, uh, going from right to left. Then from this work, we determine the optimal decision strategy. What comes first is the decision whether to conduct the market research. So start with a square node that represents a decision point. Now the choices are whether to conduct the market research or not. So conduct market research or don't conduct uh, market research. If you don't conduct the market research, then you just have to go ahead and make a decision about whether to make or buy the component. So we have another decision point here and two alternatives, manufacture the component or purchase the component. After you manufacture or purchase, then the demand level will be known. So the demand level is a chance node, so circles. And there were three different demand levels, high, medium, and low. So three branches for each chance node, high, medium, low. That's it for this part of not conducting the research. Now, if you conduct the research, then 
you have to see what it says. It might say favorable market or unfair market. And that is a chance event, so we need to have a circle. And two states of nature, favorable prediction or unfavorable prediction. Now after a prediction, now you need to decide whether to manufacture or purchase the component. So we have a decision point, manufacture, purchase. Same thing for unfavorable prediction, still need to decide manufacture or purchase. Then you, we have the actual demand levels. That's really a complete tree. There's nothing more that's going to happen after these branches as far as we're concerned. Here's a completed decision tree. It's a little neater uh, with the uh, nodes all labeled. Now we replace all the given data on our tree, the payoffs to the right of the branches, and the probabilities next to the appropriate branches. From the payoff table here, we could assign the appropriate payoffs. Let's see, manufacture, and then high demand, that's 200. Then medium demand, 60. Low demand, negative 30. Now, if we purchase, the payoffs are over here, 140, 80, and 20. Now, if you conduct the research, there is a cost of $10,000 incurred. Since $10,000 is a cost, we'll put it in as a negative 10. When we do our node calculations later, we'll need to make sure to account for this cost. Now we could copy the payoffs we have here to the other parts of the tree. As for the probabilities, there are some on the payoff table right here and the others that have to do with the market research. The probabilities here are the ones without doing the market research, so they must go to the bottom part of the tree here. 0 0.3, 0 0.4, and 0 0.3 go to high, medium, and low demands. Now, what about the branches manufacture and purchase? Do these need probabilities? Uh, no, because these are decision alternatives, not the chance events. Now, what if the market research is conducted? Well, what is the probability of favorable prediction? Well, it's given right here, and unfavorable prediction probability is given as 0 0.6. What about manufacturing and purchase? As we discussed before, coming from square nodes, these branches do not need probabilities. Now all these other branches coming from the chance nodes, the, you know, the circles, they need probabilities. At these points, we are already given the prediction results, favorable or unfavorable, so we'll have to use conditional probabilities given right here. Given favorable report, the probability of high demand is favorable given high demand 0.45. Medium demand 0.4, low demand 0.15. Now these other branches, we use the same set of probabilities because we're still given a favorable prediction. For the remaining branches here, we are given unfavorable prediction. So we have to use the these three probabilities, given unfavorable, probability of high, medium, and low demands. To determine the best decision strategy, we need to solve the tree. That is, compute the node values going from right to left. We compute the values at the nodes 8, 9, 10, 11, and then use those values to compute the nodes 4 and 5, and then 2, and so on. At a circle node, for each branch, we multiply the probability by the value and then add the results over all the branches. At a square node, we just choose the best value from all the branches. For example, at node 8, we have three branches, so we need to multiply three times and then add. So, it will be 
0.45 times 200 plus 0.4 times 60 plus 0.15 times negative 30, which is 90, 24, and negative 4.5, adding to 109.5. At node 9, it will be 0.45 times 140 plus 0.4 times 80 plus 0.15 times 20. That gives us 63 plus 32 plus 3 is 98. So 98 for the expected value at node 9. With similar calculations at node 10 using these three branches we get 52 and at node 11 we get 68. Now nodes 4 and 5 are decision nodes because they are squares so we just get to choose the uh, better option. At node 4 between manufacturing and purchase Manufacture leads to a higher expected payoff than the purchase, so we go with the manufacturer and get for expected value 109.5. At node 5, between 52 and 68, 68 is higher, so we go with the purchase, that giving us 68 here. Now node 2 is a chance node, so we need to do that expected value calculation. Well, there is probably 0.4 of getting expected payoff of 109.5 and probably 0.6 of getting expected payoff of 68. So multiplying each value by the probability and adding gives us 0.4 times 109.5 plus 0.6 times 68, 43.8 plus 40.8 gives us 84.6. With similar calculations here at nodes 6 and 7, we get 75 and 80. Then at node 3, we picked a higher value between 75 and 80 to get 80 with a purchase. Now at node 1, we need to remember that conducting research incurs cost of $10,000. So we need to take this into account before we decide whether to conduct the research or not. The net expected value from conducting research is 84.6 minus 10 is 74.6. And the expected value from not conducting research is 80. So in this case, conducting research leads to lower expected value, and we choose not to conduct the research. So we go this way. And the final expected value at node 1 is 80 the higher value between 74.6 and 80. To come up with the optimal decision strategy, we start at node 1 and follow the arrows. So when we are at node 1, we want to go this way, don't conduct the research, and here it says go ahead and purchase. And then after that what would happen is the demand will be high, medium, or low. We have no control over that. So any one of these three events could happen and the resulting payoff will be 140 or 80 or 20. Now we could state the best decision strategy. The answer here is don't conduct the market research, just go ahead and purchase the component. The maximum expected value from this is $80,000.